içki yatırımcılığı e, araçlarının kullanımı açısından ve inisiyatif aslında yeşil enerji projelerine erişimi e, sağlıyor. İstanbul e, in, e, Uluslararası in, Merkezi aslında Malezya ve İslami İşbirliği Teşkilatı ve ICD İslami etki ve e, İslami finans ve etki yatırımcılığı platformu da bu e, müdahalelerin ardından kuruldu. Bu da İslami finans aktörlerinin kapasitelerini artırmaları ve sürdürülebilir kalkınma olanaklarını keşfetmeleri için kuruldu. Ve bir başkası da Zeka. E, Zeka, UNDP bu konuda Basna ile aynı zamanda çalışıyor. E, ve Basna ile e, Research in this files provides limited insights because there are uh, there has been a little opportunity for researchers to get real life experiences. Uh, in other words, uh, um, proposals for connecting to Zekat, Vak, or Qarz al Hassan fail to consider real life consequences. Uh, but uh, there are they are highly aligned with the spirit of the SDGs and they are rooted in redistribution and philanthropy through addressing the basic needs of the vulnerable people uh, and create a social safety net. Uh, for this reason, uh, this can play a critical role in the realization of the global vision of generating sufficient income earning opportunities. 
uh, as a conclusion, uh, maybe in reality, uh, limitations uh, such as a lack of standard of governance, lack of quality of human resources, lack of disclosure and transparency, uh, currently uh, faced by Islamic uh, social finance tools, uh, affect uh, their effectiveness and efficiency in achieving the purposes. Thank you very much. Maybe I can expand some points uh, regarding your questions. Absolutely, and thank you very much, Abdurrahman, for the very comprehensive presentation. And just a quick reminder to the audience, uh, you have the chat box uh, where you can submit your question. Uh, we're gonna try to tackle them, uh, but um, let me um, uh, t uh, let me start where, where you left, Abdurrahman. There's clearly a strong link between Islamic finance and sustainability, but the question that matters today is, why we're not seeing a windfall of green or social issuance, They would give less taxes to the government, for example. So it was essentially done on on a, on the private sector, and it was taken up uh, voluntarily and without much uh, burden on the on the budget of the government itself. Uh, but uh, what we see uh, in the Islamic experience, uh, which is reflected in the Islamic finance, is that current issues are actually tackled usually. You know things like poverty, things like, uh, you know, donations, educations, current health issues. So you would see many of the Islamic banks and Islamic corporations actually uh, give donations and do social responsibility work uh, from their own funds, whether these are uh, charitable funds or whether these are uh, non-Islamic income, uh, you would actually see that. Uh, but two things were actually missing, I think, from uh, or, or three things rather. Uh, one is uh, to get your customers engaged in, in sustainability. That was kind of lacking. So we didn't think about giving credits to those com uh, companies that actually had a social impact or, or uh, with uh, sustainability concerns. That wasn't there. That is only coming in only recently. Second thing uh, was, uh, uh, like I said, the experience was with regards to things like zakat, charitable uh, charities, which concern current issues like poverty, uh, you know, uh, income distribution and things like that. But sustainability in the current sense actually looks at the future also, what we are leaving to the next generation. So it, it is more concerned about sustainable development, sustainable uh, environmental care, so that what we are leaving to our to the next generations are not so important. This wasn't an issue uh, for the Islamic countries. I mean, uh, and that is reasonable because we weren't industrialized. And as you know, it's, it's the industrialization that actually had a major toll on, on the resources, uh, you know, uh, for, for the next generations. 
now that is also becoming, uh, you know, uh, coming into our concern, uh, uh, uh, coming into our radar. Uh, thirdly, uh, while all these social uh, uh, responsibility projects were done, we didn't actually think about measuring them because in Islam, Islamic culture, you know, uh, we say things like what one hand does, the other hand does not know. Uh, so you would give uh, charity, for example, no one would know about that. We would boast about it. We didn't, you know, uh, even, you know, the only calculation we did was with regards to zakat. No one does uh, calculations with regard to how much sadaqah they gave, for example, how much charity they gave. So a measurement and uh, being able to report that and be being able to be, uh, become a role model to your customers, to the society, is only a recent phenomenon in Islamic uh, countries and Islamic finance. I think uh, uh, with all these things now uh, becoming our concern and with the introduction of fi uh, financial tools and instruments, uh, we are going to probably be seeing a lot of investment and concern coming into this area, especially now uh, uh, uh, uh, that this is an important issue with regards to the major uh, investors all around the GCC, Malaysia, Turkey. Uh, you know, people want to see social responsible uh, funds available now, rather than just any other funds. So, with with the with, with the larger portion of the society now getting uh, more uh, concerned about uh, uh, uh, ESG. Uh, I think uh, we will be seeing uh, not just Islamic uh, finance, but also uh, other corporations in other sectors being more involved with this. So I think uh, uh, business plans uh, for financing coming to the Islamic finance institutions will be more geared and focused on sustainability. And uh, because in, the, in those areas, Islamic finance uh, uh, institutions are now providing more resources, you know, giving it uh, uh, at lower costs, for example. So these are becoming more advantages uh, for, for the co corporations themselves, the SMEs also. Uh, so I think, yes, we, are, uh, we, were, we started late. Uh, it's not because of uh, non-concern in this area, but because of the way our culture was uh, shaped. But I think that is changing now, and I think uh, there is a huge concern, especially now with digitalization coming in, uh, that we could measure that and also report that and, and uh, uh, incentivize our customers to do the same. Excellent. Thank you very much, Malik Shah. So um, a better integration of sustainability within the supply chain of the Islamic financial institution in Sukuk and a better measurement of the impact would definitely help to unlock um, a, the, the, the, the opportunities that we think exist and that we don't see in reality uh, as of now. Um, now, I'd like to um, explore a little bit what is being done in other places where Islamic finance has been expanding. And one of these places is obviously uh, Malaysia, where uh, Islamic finance, I think, has uh, expanded and became a systemically important sector. Um, I think, and, and, and from that perspective, uh, Zalina, can you share with us the experience of Malaysia in developing the ecosystem for sustainable finance? Hi, Dr. Damak. Thank you. Thank you for having me on this panel. Um, the way we evolved into sustainable finance, as you know, we've always prioritized Islamic finance. And we have grown the asset management industry, the Sukuk market in the Islamic finance place. And what we found was we, we saw a trend. We saw there was going to be a shift towards more sustainable capitalism as early as 2005. And what happened was in 2014, we came out with the regulatory framework for the SRI Sukuk. But Although the regulator was ahead of the market in that sense, the market took a while to, to catch on. It wasn't until 2017 that we actually saw the private sector start issuing green sukuks, whereby uh, you were using an Islamic financial instrument to fund green projects. And 
you know, I think in as per in other countries, when you talk about green, the first thing you think about are solar panels. So most of our initial sort of issuances were in the space of solar panels. Fast forward slightly, 2019, we then expanded the remit of the framework to emphasize, as you mentioned earlier, social projects to identify different areas of what could qualify as green. And one of the areas that we saw that was an opportunity was for banks to issue sustainability sukuks to then carry on funding, be it environment or social projects. So from a regulatory framework, we did that. We also addressed some ecosystem problems. So for example, uh, as most of you know, when you issue an SRI sukuk, you need to have a third party verification that the project is sustainable, green. In Malaysia, the only third party verifiers at that point were international players like Cicero, Systematics, and they were really expensive. That increased the cost of financing. So what we then did is we worked with the local rating agencies and we developed domestic services, which significantly reduced the cost. In addition to that, we also provided uh, incentives to help the issuer sort of cover that cost. So I think it's not, it's beyond regulation. We also developed the ecosystem to make sure the service providers were there. Um, but one of the things I think in all our discussions with the various stakeholders, government, private sector, regulators, intermediaries, and even investors, asset owners and asset managers, we found what was not causing that significant shift. At the end of the day, we all know the environmental issues that are facing us are very serious. We've got a short runway, 2030, 2050 is just around the corner. 2030 is eight years away. And we have a lot of things we have to achieve in that time to make sure that the, the environment doesn't deteriorate more than we plan to. So what we realized was there's a lack of expertise, lack of understanding of the new technologies were coming in place, lack of expertise in terms of taking traditional Islamic financial instruments and shifting it towards, towards providing more financing for sustainable projects. So what we did in the last two years was we set up dedicated centers of excellence, one for asset owners and asset managers, one for intermediaries and one for corporates. I just wanna focus on the one for intermediaries because that goes back to your, or your first question on why haven't we seen an influx of Islamic finance in the space of social? I think in Malaysia, we have seen it in different areas. I think one tends to think of Islamic finance predominantly in the Sukuk space or Islamic banking, but I think the way Malaysia has seen that journey move is slightly different. What we've seen is, for example, uh, in the asset management industry, we came up with a wakaf based fund. What that means is that whoever invests in it, whatever sort of, um, whatever sort of additional um, returns that comes back from that, that can be walk off or for a specific uh, uh, uh, for a specific need. So we saw that development whereby we took an Islamic social finance product and we sort of merged it with the traditional asset management fund and we sort of changed the dynamics of that. And we've seen some, some interesting demand there. On the so Front, the government stepped in and issued two social, uh, SRI sukuks, predominantly focusing on social issues, which was the, which has impacted every single country because of COVID. But interestingly enough, I think there's one area that we are seeing much traction in Malaysia is in the digital space. So uh, Malaysia has a, has a, the real economy is predominantly run by SMEs. And when there were shutdowns and lockdowns, a lot of the SMEs and the micro entrepreneurs really suffered in terms of business. And when they needed to refinance the existing, um, uh, existing position, uh, they struggled with the banks. And therefore we saw a, a shift in the demand for Islamic ECF and P2P. And we saw significant increase in the volumes there. And not only so much in terms of the SMEs and the micro entrepreneurs that were looking for demand, but there was we, we saw a significant amount of money coming from retail investors. Retail investors today 
are very different from institutional investors. They want to invest sustainably. They want to invest in social goods. So you can see that changing dynamic. So that's how generally, in a nutshell, the journey has been in Malaysia, but there's still much more to do. Thank you. And I remember the social sukuk, the preteen sukuk that was issued a couple of years ago and That's how right. it was. Uh, um, uh, I mean, the appetite in the market was really strong. Uh, and I, what I also like about Malaysia is that you have an approach where you put together the building blocks in order to push the industry. And here, I'd like to bring you to the conversation, Sakan. How is Istanbul positioning itself? in the intersection between Islamic finance and sustainability, and specifically through the, uh, uh, the, the role of participation finance in the Istanbul Financial Center project. Thank you, uh, Dr. Demak, giving the floor, giving the floor. First of all, I would like to thank the uh, Turkish Capital Market Association and all the organizers and supporting for organizing the summit. I believe the annual Turkish Capital Market Summit is an important platform every year. Uh, for discussions for, for potential developments in the capital markets. Uh, and I hope this session also will bring fruitful discussion uh, to the table. Uh, when we talk about the Istanbul Finance Center project, uh, first of all, I, I should mention that when we talk about the Istanbul's position, uh, what we are talking about generally is Turkey's position because the financial activity in Istanbul is somewhat equivalent to the Turkey's financial activity. Uh, 47 international and national banks, headquarters, and treasure centers are based in Istanbul. And more than 90% of the members of the Association of the Financial Institutions are in Istanbul. I mean, it's easy to note that more than 75% of the financial activity that happens in Turkey taking place in Istanbul. So any strategy uh, to develop sustainability or anything related to Istanbul is, a, as, a, as a matter of fact, a uh, a development agenda, development uh, plan for Turkey in general. And we, we, we think uh, that the Istanbul Finance Center project is basically has two main pillars. And one of them is participative finance or participation finance. And I would like to note that when we say the participation finance, uh, we, we, we are not using the Islamic finance, but it's not uh, for the reason that we are ashamed of religion. Alhamdulillah, we are Muslim country. We are uh, happy with our religion, but we we want to note something. You know, uh, the is the basic ground of the uh, Islamic finance, as Dr. Yazici has already mentioned, is asset-based nature, and that nature includes many other aspects like private equity, venture capital, and crowdfunding. And the Islamic finance is not for just the Muslim countries; it's for the beneficial of the sustainability of the global markets, because we have seen in uh, I mean, rest everybody knows that for. Uh, 2008 a crisis has uh, started many huge debates about the sustainability of the financial system and alternative uh, paradigms like the Islamic finance, or we want to call it participative finance, uh, has been popular since then. And that's not just for, you know, a uh, uh, uh, uh, model shift, but it's, it's, it's, it's based on some problems with the risk transfer mechanisms going on the orthodox finance system. Uh, so that's the reason we see a participative finance, participation finance, uh, an important uh, aspect and, and competitive advantage of the Istanbul Finance Center project. But in order to achieve a regional uh, development or in, in general global development in the financial markets, first we need to have the legislative background for the participative finance. That's the uh, main duty. And uh, we are on the track of creating an, an ecosystem that's been built in Istanbul Finance Center project. It's not just a physical in infrastructure project, but it's a, a project to develop a specialized uh, a zone, an economic hub, which has some specific rules. So uh, we need an underlying legislative background. So uh, there has been long process of getting uh, prepared for the Istanbul Finance Center law. Uh, we are hoping that at the end of the year or at the beginning of the year 2022, uh, Istanbul Finance Center project law will be uh, executed by the parliament of, of the Turkish government. And uh, from that on, I think uh, we should leave uh, for the questions because uh, or I'm, I'm the head of the Istanbul Finance Center uh, department of the uh, finance office, but we have also established another uh, department which is called 
participative finance department. They are also working on other projects. Uh, maybe I should leave the floor and maybe talk uh, in the second round about that. Excellent. Thank you very much, Sakan. Uh, now, I think at this stage, uh, and again, a reminder to the audience, if you want to ask a question, please, please use the uh, chat function to submit your question and we'll try to tackle it in the discussion. Uh, but at this stage, I think the audience could benefit from um, uh, a discussion on the different products that are available in Islamic finance and that could be leveraged in the financing of sustainability. Uh, maybe Abdurrahman, any, any views on that? What are these products, how they can be leveraged more? Uh, actually, uh, in, uh, around the world, uh, uh, there is a demand uh, about these products. Uh, for, uh, maybe we can say, for example, Africa. There is a huge demand uh, for green sugar in Africa. Uh, over uh, about uh, 700 million Africans now lack access to electricity, which corresponds to six out of 10 Africans. Uh, also, Africans uh, uh, offers promising potential for uh, diverse energy resources. Uh, according to uh, International Renewable Energy Agency, estimates that uh, uh, about uh, 35 uh, billion dollar will be needed per year from 2015 to 2030 to fully exploit Africa's significant potential in renewables. Uh, I see there's a huge potential and it will be increased. Many products will be developed uh, and diversified. As I know, as mentioned, Global Islamic Finance and Impact OS platform also uh, working to structure a green cook uh, aims to establish a, establish a collaboration among African Development Bank and Islamic Development Bank and UNDP to facilitate uh, financing for renewable energy projects in Africa. Uh, by these projects, uh, uh, increase access to electricity in Africa, uh, promote and mainstream clean energy solutions, improve also private sector's role in development uh, cooperation, also expand renewable energy industry, industry capacity, also this facilitate job creation. Uh, yeah. Maybe it is only one example, uh, Dr. Damak. Right, thank you. And maybe, Zalina, I'd like to bring you to the discussion here. What can we learn from your experience? What are the products that are being uh, the most used in Malaysia? What, what can we learn, basically, from your experience, knowing that Malaysia is ahead of pretty much everyone when it comes to uh, sustainable uh, uh, Islamic finance product? Thank you. So, Dr. Damak, I, I would answer that in terms of the kind of products. At the end of the day, the financial center or the capital market plays a role in terms of its financing the real economy. So it really depends on the structure of the real economy and what the needs are. Uh, so for example, in Dubai, uh, you would see that the sustainable sukuks or the green sukuks that have come out or the sustainably linked sukuks that have come out uh, in the range of uh, 500, um, a range of 500 to 750 million US dollars, because that's the size of financing needed. Whereas if you take Malaysia's experience, uh, the funding sizes are much smaller. Uh, so you, we, what we have seen is that the Sukuk side is developing quite strongly because those are the kind of larger projects. You're talking about the solar projects, you're talking about green buildings, uh, you're talking about the banks issuing sustainable sukuks. So these sort of industry sectors that are looking for funding, we've also seen some projects in waste management and also in water filtration projects. So these kind of projects usually leverage on the sukuk instrument. But as I mentioned just now, we're seeing a lot of traction in the ECF P2P space as well, whereby we have smaller players wanting to raise smaller ticket items and they're going through the digital platforms. Something interesting that we've started seeing in the last 12 months is the private market space, which is leveraging on Islamic fund management sort of principles is also seeing a lot of demand. So we're seeing projects in the space of sustainable timber, 
we're seeing projects in the space of sustainable carpentry. So it depends on the t on the size of the business and the amount of funding we've, we they need. And we've seen significant interest in the Sukuk space because I think that's the traditional space everyone's comfortable with, everyone's aware of it, everyone's familiar with it. There's an element of branding around it as well. But we're seeing a lot of traction in the private market space and we're seeing significant traction in the digital place. Uh, ECF and P2P, Islamic ECF and P2P is seeing a lot of traction in that space. So it's nice to see a varied sort of uh, use of Islamic instruments to fund the real economy in this space. Right, thank you. Uh, I'll come back to Sukuk and digitalization, but before that, maybe Malik Shah, what about Turkey's experience? Turkey has strong ambitions when it comes to electric cars, for example. What what what products are you seeing in the Turkish markets? Where do you see the growth coming from in the future when it comes to sustainable finance? Yeah, well, there is actually there are two ways to look at this. One is from a from a bank's perspective, there there's the liability products like Sukuk in order to generate the funds in order to uh, uh, uh, finance uh, green projects. Uh, and, and Sukuk is the best uh, uh, instrument there. But one interesting thing that uh, Kuwait Turk recently did is a tier two uh, Sukuk, green Sukuk, which is the first uh, in the world. I think, uh, it, it, you know, having or financing your capital base through green Sukuk is also an interesting approach. And I think, yeah, that has been tested and, and it was well received actually by the market. Uh, so uh, I think uh, also uh, opening up new uh, pools uh, with regards to utilizing the uh, funds uh, that are pro provided in these restricted investment uh, pools to only green uh, financing green projects is also another approach. I think those also can be, uh, you know, uh, securitized to be, able, you know, so that investors in that area could actually use those as, as capital market instruments also. Uh, but on the asset side, I think it, there, is, uh, there is a lot of things that are being done without actually reporting or, or measuring. Uh, one important area in Turkey is, is, is uh, renewable energy, for example. There has been a lot of investment by, by the banks into renewable, renewable energy. I think uh, there has been a huge shift in the Turkish energy sector. We, because of that uh, interest in, in renewable energy, uh, water treatment, uh, and, and this is not just corporate, by the way. I mean, for example, many of the older buildings need transformation uh, in order to better uh, isolate for a, against you know loss of heating, and that is that has a huge environmental impact, especially uh, with regards to uh, cities' uh, air air uh, qualities. Uh, also. Uh, you know, uh, we uh, recycling the water uh, so that you can reutilize it within the uh, flats again. So these are you, you can also provide retail finance in order to make those transformations uh, available. Uh, going forward, obviously, with the introduction of EVs, uh, I think. Uh, uh, what, uh, one good uh, uh, product there would be to have better financing options uh, with, uh, towards uh, electric, uh, electric vehicles rather than you know fuel gas uh, vehicles. I think uh, it, it's you know a, an introduction of a new financing retail product in that area would be exceptionally good. Uh, obviously, once the market in that area uh, in that sector opens up. So there are many things that can be done except uh, other than Sukuk, uh, which definitely has to grow, by the way. Uh, but I think uh, most importantly, uh, uh, you know, bringing about that uh, uh, uh, conscience uh, into our customers uh, is, is very important. Traditionally, we have done a lot on the impact investment side, uh, which cannot always be measured, you know, how much additional uh, employment uh, the customer does when you finance that, that's not easy to measure. But uh, for example, providing women entrepreneur, entrepreneurs uh, access to finance, it definitely can be measured, for example. One other thing that we have experimented with is to 
uh, uh, invest in startups that actually look into, you know, have solutions uh, or, or, you know, for, for uh, uh, sustainable uh, economy. Uh, we recently uh, accepted one uh, uh, startup that actually uh, recycles coffee uh, from uh, coffee chains uh, and, and turns it into, you know, usable uh, products. Uh, you know, investing in private equity or, or startup equity into these is also, I think, important, and it will also incentivize others that want to have uh, ide that have ideas or uh, viable products that can be introduced into this area. Uh, so, you know, using capital product, capital capital market products, fund products, uh, you know, collection products, and financing products. These are all available, and I think yeah, in in due time they will be coming in in uh, in the financial sector in Turkey, especially in, in Islamic banking. Right. Thank you. And I think this kind of experience is really what the investors and the uh, the, the the financial community needs in order to understand where's the opportunities, how this is being done, and how we could eventually uh, uh, help to unlock the opportunities related to sustainability in Islamic finance. Um, I want to go back to the Sukuk and the opportunities offered by Sukuk. Um, and the question that I have here is to, to what extent are we putting too much constraints on ourselves? Um, let me explain my question. So in the UAE, for example, we've adopted the AOEF standard a couple of years ago. And among the standards, there was the standard 59 that came in force from the 1st of January 2021 and standard 50, 59 is about the sale of debt, is about the tangibility ratio, and it made the issuance of Sukuk a little bit more complex. And it's as, as, as you perfectly know, it's already much more complex than issuing a conventional bond. So let me bring you uh, uh, uh, in, Sarkhan, here. What the regulators can do in order to level the playing field for Islamic finance and help to further develop the industry? Thank you for the question. I believe first thing to be done is creating an environment which has corporate sustainability. I think the issue is going with the corporate. I mean, every country, every region has its own fuck uh, and, uh, you know, legislative uh, I mean, uh, institutions and their legislative regulations. But the end of, at the end of the day, uh, there should be some kind of uh, corporate sustainability in general in the global. So that's also or another phase of study uh, in finance uh, office, because we, as, as I said before, we have a participative finance department and that they are working on a participative finance uh, strategy document. And that document has mainly five targets. And one of them is to create, create uh, corporate sustainability, especially creating an infrastructure. And I believe it's going to be, at the end of the day, turning into an, a law or legislative backbone. And secondly, uh, there should be a transformation of the reinstitution of the uh, participative finance institutions. Because when we talk about the participation finance, especially in Turkey, what we have is participation banks. But we need more financial you know, institutions like uh, uh, in, uh, invest, investment companies, uh, some sort of walk, walk, uh, private investment companies, also at the same time, deposit banks uh, and insurance companies which will work with the uh, Islamic finance. So that, uh, that uh, aspect should be general, uh, developed at the same time. And thirdly, uh, for the participative finance strategy document, the aim is to create an, an holistic approach for different kinds of institutions uh, and create a thick, thick governance. I think uh, it relates to your questions uh, regarding the scoot uh, changes, uh, thick governance has been handled by uh, regulators at the same time. And uh, in line with the uh, participation finance strategy document, fourth uh, target is the increasing human capital expertise in participation finance. So. And many Sukuk issuers are coming from the uh, orthodox banking sector. So they are not looking for the uh, uh, 
historical experiences, historical uh, uh, uh, potentials. They are just, you know, sometimes, uh, excuse me, but it's like a copycatting different uh, uh, experiments of other countries. And fifth, fifth uh, but the not, not the last, the fifth target will be increasing financial literacy and awareness in participation finance. I mean, you can uh, issue many scoops, but if there is no demand for that, if there is no awareness for that, you will not get far away with that. So I think uh, our, our department working on uh, that, that strategy document will try to elaborate on that. And, and, and also they have sent the suggestion to private and public companies. And then in the, in the near future, we are expecting uh, participation finance to grow from this strategic documents, uh, suggestions and, and, and, and comments. Excellent. Thank you very much. And I think also one way to spur the industry further is to standardize and to simplify. I mean, uh, to, to go back to the example you took earlier, Abdurrahman, about the opportunities of the electrification of Africa. I know many African countries that looked at the Sukuk market and then when they saw the amount of energy they will have to spend in order to uh, come up with their Sukuk, they just decided to walk away. Um, and, and, and I think so higher standardization, simplification, and maybe also uh, digitalization because digitalization can also help here. And, and here I have a question for you, Aliksha. So how digital innovation can work as a catalyst in order to bridge sustainable economic systems, ecosystems? Yeah, I mean, uh, we have always complained about uh, the operational overhead of Islamic banking compared to conventional banking. We're not just putting money into the pockets of our customers when we finance them. Rather, we have to know what the financing is about. We have to know, even if it's a simple murabaha, we, we, we have to get the invoices and, and make sure that those that transaction is real and, and uh, you know, and it's also Sharia uh, the compliant. Uh, I mean, there are so many areas that actually uh, uh, that that there's a huge potential for Islamic finance in sustainable and social uh, areas. But one thing is, for example, there's a huge migration issue now, especially in Turkey, and there are many international bodies that are interested in it. I mean, we're all talking about climate change, but when it comes to working together concerning climate change. No two countries come together uh, to do a, a single project. But uh, with migration, uh, interestingly enough, EU is working with IDB uh, in order to make sure that uh, those uh, in Syrian, for example, uh, uh, people that have come to Turkey, stay in Turkey, have reasonable living conditions, have businesses. But in order to, for, and they need banks like uh, uh, Al Baraka and other Islamic banks to do the actual transaction to do the actual financing. Uh, and the problem there is, is how are you going to make sure that this is, uh, this is not terrorist financing, uh, this, is, this is compliant with the regulations, that the money is going where it should be going. Uh, this is all huge overheads uh, that uh, complicate the operations and also raises the cost. Now, here is uh, what the digitalization is promising us. It, uh, things like blockchain, smart contracts can actually reduce that overhead significantly and make sure that you are compliant and all parties are actually uh, relaxed concerning that, you know, what, whatever uh, they are meaning to finance is actually going. And that is the same with charities also. I mean, I know there are initial uh, experiments with regard to wax blockchains, for example, you know, people want to donate, but they want to also make sure that this money is going where it should be going. And, and I think uh, uh, digitalization actually has a good promise uh, there uh, and, and a good potential, but we need to work on those. I, I think it's, it's very important for Islamic uh, financial institutions to actually uh, finance these opportunities and, and projects to make sure that that infrastructure is ready uh, in order to boost that uh, area. And we have been uh, doing initial experiments with regards to how we can actually utilize blockchain with regards to uh, you know, uh, reducing the operations uh, 
uh, and introducing smart contracts to Murabaha uh, transactions, once that is ready, for example, that will be an example and that can be further enhanced to uh, finance sustainable uh, and social projects, uh, which I think is one of the major hindrance, hindrance points uh, uh, in, in, in, in growing in that area, especially for Islamic finance products. Thank you. And absolutely, I think one way forward could be through the digital sukuk, the capacity of issuing sukuk in a much quick, with a much quicker process, with a much lower cost that could open the market to the SMEs and to the mid-sized corporate um, in order to uh, attract alternative ways of financing. Uh, same thing with crowdfunding, for example. The crowdfunding uh, platforms are there in, in Turkey and in other places. The regulation is also there. But the problem is for, for individual investors in those projects and, and ideas is to make sure that that financing that they have provided is actually used in that area. Uh, how to measure the performance of the uh, you know, the, the, the, the pe person who's actually getting that finance is the major issue there. The crowdfunding is not, it's already there. there there's no problem. The technology is there. Uh, I think, you know, going forwards using the digitalization and technology in order to, you know, extend that uh, supply chain, if, if, you, if, if uh, I can call that, uh, the, uh, to make sure that, you know, uh, everyone gets uh, what they actually want to get. Is I think is going to be a huge, uh, you know, quantum leap in this area. Exactly, and I think this is where blockchain could come through the traceability of where the funds have gone exactly and uh, how how they have been used. The other catalyst that I could think of, uh, which is related to what you mentioned earlier, Abdurrahman, and here I'd like to get your opinion, is the multilaterals. So I think some of the countries that made it to the other side in their Sukuk issuance journey were helped by the multilaterals. Can you share with us what these are doing these days and where do you see the growth going forward? Abdurrahman, I think you're on mute. Yeah. Okay, uh, okay, thank you, uh, Dr. Damak, sorry, or in communist. Actually, uh, there are uh, many uh, collaboration and uh, initiatives, uh, studies about it. For example, in Turkey, UNDP, IACPST try to uh, establish, uh, issue first time municipality green to cook. Uh, and then there are some uh, plan uh, uh, for technical support uh, for Morocco or uh, some OIC countries. Uh, about technical assistance, first time green cook issue or Djibouti or like this. Uh, of course, there are huge potential, but uh, as you know, the uh, after the COVID issue and uh, some whole chain, some plans stopped. Maybe need uh, again uh, to revise some things. Yeah, thank you. Uh, but uh, maybe uh, finally, I can say. Uh, uh, there is a huge demand. Uh, unfortunately, Islamic finance know only 1% of the convention fin uh, finance, but uh, uh, principles and products of Islamic finance, uh, huge potential. Uh, maybe through developing more resources, standardization, increasing transparency, uh, and uh, developing sharing compliant, innovative, and uh, Planning projects and uh, products, it, uh, this size will be increased. Uh, also uh, mentioned, uh, uh, digit digitalization is important point. Another point, uh, also academic researches and maybe may focus on real life consequences of uh, these products to uh, increase their efficiency and effectiveness. Excellent. Thank you very much. Um, I think time's, uh, time is against us. Uh, so I suggest that we finish with a lightning round. So um, I'm going to ask each one of you one simple question. In five years from now, where do you see the industry heading? And to what extent would you think it will be more or less integrated with the sustainable finance ecosystem? I'll start with you, Zalina. 
In five years time, I think Islamic finance will be quite integrated in sustainable finance. It will probably be one of the pillars of sustainable finance. And hopefully we see it transgress beyond the Muslim countries. And we see conventional investors using Islamic finance instruments to invest in sustainable products as well. I think it's just a matter of time. We've addressed most of the issues and it's just a greater understanding of what Islamic finance can bring to the table. All right, thank you. Uh, Maliksha? Well, uh, up until now, uh, Islamic finance in Turkey has distinguished itself by promoting the idea that uh, we were actually having a huge social impact by uh, you know, uh, ex expanding the financial inclu inclusion, especially to those uh, portions of the population that did not uh, want to uh, you know, use conventional banking. Uh, and also SMEs, which actually had a very small portion in the banking sector uh, uh, advances to the economy. Uh, mm -hmm. That uh, niche slogan uh, that Islamic finance is actually helping society uh, needs to be developed, and I think in order to continue that, be, you know, conti uh, in order to be able to continue uh, saying the same things, uh, that is going to expand into sustainable finance also. And I think right. Islamic uh, finance, especially in Turkey, uh, is going to use that uh, idea to promote itself further, as was the case, for example, with Kuwait Turks to Sukuk, Green Sukuk, and I think others are on the way. Uh, so I think, yes, it's going to, uh, you know, the, the ratios are going to change significantly going forwards. Right. Excellent. And uh, Sarkan and Abdurrahman, in 20 seconds, literally, please, because I'm being pushed by the organizers okay, to close okay. the panel. <laughs> I think I'm going to summarize like this. I mean, all the financial, global financial problems have been swept on, under the rug. And at some point, you call it Islamic finance, participation finance, social responsible finance, impact investment, sustainable, whatever you call it, it has to change. The technology is coming, disrupting the conventional methods. Uh, it's it's going to be a catalyzer. So maybe five years, time, 10 years time, I don't know, but it, it's going to change. It has to change because risk transfer mechanism is right now what we have is toxic and it can, it's, it's, it's, it's not sustainable. Thank you. Uh, Abdurrahman? Uh, thank you, Dr. Damak. Maybe I can say uh, finally, uh, needs to focusing on challenges and issues uh, faced uh, by Islamic financial instruments to increase their effectiveness and efficiency. I think it's the more important point. Yeah. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you very much for your time and thank you very much for your insight. I suggest we leave it there. Um, so, um, organizers, back to you. Thank you.